we will be traveling across North America in search of the best teenage soccer players. They'll be picked in order to compete for a single position at the Everton Youth Academy. This is their chance to go pro and earn a six-figure contract. Only one of these skilled athletes will survive the final cut, but most of them will endure the frustration of failure. How many of you would scratch people's eyes out and take everything to be a footballer? You have to live it, you have to breathe it, it's got to envelop you, but that's my life, it has to be your life. Get on the ball! Our talented soccer experts are Steve Niger, Jason Messa, Bassam Naim, Hubert Busby and Ray Hall, manager of the Everton Youth Academy. It doesn't matter how good you think you are, it only matters how good we think you are. This is the dream. I'm coming to see if we can find the play. Are you the one? Previously on Soccer Dreams. Is there any way that we can uh, kind of bond the team together? This was a memorable day for the players. But today we got the day off, we got to go to Ottawa. We went to the parliament buildings and it was really fun. We just had a relaxing day today. Because I do want to find something cool, man. <laughs> tomorrow we have our, our big game. We play a game tomorrow against the university team. We play a game against a men's team. Some like really good men's team who's been winning everything. I think we've come up with the boys that we need to look seriously at. The boys that we've narrowed down to have made the trip worthwhile. Right. Okay guys, let's have a good game tonight. Everything that we asked of you, but you know the coaches spot what's going on as well. Okay, go and do a second half then. Good boys. I've made my selection, uh, and we, we've got the one. Liverpool, the land of the Beatles, and two of the Premier League's top teams. Here, you are either red or blue. But first, let's visit Everton and Goodson Park. Uh, I came down here as a young boy from Scotland. Uh, not much experience. Uh, I'd watched Celtic and Rangers uh, in Glasgow, been to those games. Came up down here to play, uh, and especially when you play Liverpool, and there was about 50 odd thousand people. The atmosphere and the noise, it just blows you away. I'd heard so much about it as a kid before I came down here and I thought it can't be that good but believe you me when you run out here uh, up the tunnel onto the pitch and, and you see the supporters it's a fantastic feeling it'd be a wonderful occasion for, for anybody uh, fingers crossed somebody will to come over here uh, and enjoy the experience because it's, it's certainly a first class experience I think when you look at the history of the football club we've got a fantastic history uh, the team I was involved in the 80s probably the most successful team in, in Everton's history we won a European trophy We chatted with some of Everton's finest past players. The People's Club sums it up, the fans are that fanatical, very demanding, but if you want to play for the big club, you know, that's what it's all about. And it was the happy time, happiest time in my football career. And it's just a great, great club to play for. And anyone who's, who has the, the honour to play for the club. I mean, winning the league championship was fantastic. You know, you're all the champions. Uh, that was a great honour. But the first European trophy was uh, tremendous as well. Nothing moves quicker on a football pitch than the football. So if, you, if you've got that, if you've got that ability to handle a football, 
that's the most that's the, that's the most important thing in being a footballer. Mm -hmm. It's all about improvement. Um, you keep on working hard, and um, I've got to say it's the best league in the world. Work hard and come over and play it. Right. Well, uh, I joined in '62. Mm -hmm. I was 19. Mm -hmm. The first season, I won a championship medal. You know, some players. I mean, Stanley Matthews, a great Stanley Matthews, and never got a, a championship medal. You know, in '66, I won the cup. Well, I didn't. Everton did. '68 went to the cup final. '69, '70 won the championship again. Played for England. I come from Barnsley, Yorkshire, and I've never left. I love the place. I'm an Evertonian through and through. The thing is, to be an Evertonian, you've got to give the crowd everything and everything. Because the Evertonians just love you for that. As simple as that. Everything. If you're good enough, he'll do it. And I look forward to seeing him. Thank you. And some great current ones. I'm Tony Hibbert. I joined the academy and I've been there ever since. It was a bit strange in a way because uh, I was playing in the reserves the, the Thursday, the Thursday before the fact that the game was on a Saturday. And I, I beat, usually like the young lads would go with the first team on the way trips to re really just get experience and just go down and you, you wouldn't think anything of it really, but you, you would always hope that sort of like you, you'd get the chance. But uh, I got, we played the reserve on the, on the Thursday and then straight after the game Thursday, they, they told uh, the lads, the young lads, including me and Leon Osmond, that we were travelling with the first team. So uh, we come in here. So I told my dad, my dad used to go always watching, and I said to him, I'm going down with the first team. Uh, there's no point coming down because I don't think I'll be, I'll be involved on it. It's just another trip away again. So he said, You sure? Sure. I said, Yeah. I said, just, just, just leave it. Uh, come the morning of the game, uh, we have a meeting. To, Read the team out, and the manager pulled me to one side and said, "Did I feel okay? Did it, was it okay?" I said, "Yeah, yeah." He said, "I'm going to start you," yeah. and that was a big, big shock and a big surprise, really, because I wasn't expecting it at all. And uh, I was straight on the phone with my dad then, but it was too late for him to come down to watch to London. It's an enjoyable step up with the way the game is, the stadiums, the crowd. It's, it, it gets you, it really holds you, and uh, if you get a really good buzz out of it. Absolutely unbelievable it is because going up when I was a kid there uh, all it was is Everton Liverpool, Everton Liverpool and then getting involved with Everton it's a dream come true. It's just keep going. If, if, if they want to play football and want to succeed in, in, in a top club they've got to work very hard at it and I know that it's hard to try and break into it but they've got to keep going and keep practicing. Practicing is the key. Let's visit Everton and coach Tony Tosh Farrell head of international football development of the English Premier League's Everton FC. I'm sure following the, the Everton way, players in North America come home over for a week or two with it with an with EPL club, taking that and that knowledge of the North America, I'm sure will stand them in good stead for the future. My philosophy is, is a simple one. The players, they started playing football because they enjoyed it. And if we as coaches take that enjoyment away, the loss from the game, they go and take up another game. Why can't they have an environment that's uh, professional, enjoyable? We all get involved in games because we enjoy them. And the minute we take the enjoyment away is when they leave the game. My message uh, would be practice a lot. Uh, practice the right things, the core skills, sometimes the the simple things are the things that are overlooked and yet it's the simple things that get you to the highest level. Well, I got into, into soccer from the age of three because we're born and bred here in Liverpool and in England in particular on, on football. There's no bigger joy, believe me, as a coach. Um, you can't give people talent, you nurture the talent and when you see a young player go right the way through from nine into our first team, Everton, and you're sitting in the stands knowing that you've been a small cog in it. Um, it's, it's a fantastic feeling. I've made my selection, uh, and we, we've got the one. Stay tuned. From the final 16 players down to the elite six, the Soccer Dreams coaches have finally chosen the one.
Coming up on Soccer Dreams, Everton manager Ray Hall makes his final decision. I've made my selection. And chooses the one. And we, we've got the one. But first, we chatted with some of Everton's possible future stars. One, two, three. Everton! Um, Patrick Boyle, play left back. Came to Everton nearly four and a half years now. I left um, my Scottish team, Livingston, came down here and joined the academy. So the standard of football down here is as much higher than it is in Scotland. So if you get the chance to excel in your, your profession, then you should take the chance to go as high as you can. Yeah, it was, I enjoyed it, obviously. It was my decision to come in that. I wanted, I wanted to improve, but obviously settling in is difficult at the start. But once you get to grips off the field and like settle into your new surroundings and get used to a new city, then the rest falls into place. Last pre-season we played against Celtic Cup in Scotland, that's the, the team I supported as a boy, so playing in front of them, 60,000 fans and that, that was for all my friends and all my family in the crowd, it was, it was a special moment. It was it's an amazing feeling, you have, you have obviously a lot of nervous energy, but um, I think once you're out on the pitch and that, and you settle onto the ball and that, then it's just, you totally switch on to like focus on the game and that, so you're not really aware of your surroundings anymore. But when I, when I first came down, obviously I was only I was um, 16, so we were. I think when you play football, you have to be prepared that it's 24 hours a day because you have to look after yourself all the time. You can't go home and just just be eating junk food and messing around. You have to be prepared for the next day as well. well there is a lot of sacrifice involved, and you have to move away from your friends and your family. And there's hard times, but um, I think while you're while you're in training, always work as hard as you can. Always, if you can, stay behind and become better because that's the only way you're going to keep your place, even the reserve team, and to get into the first team. Are you the one? Um, Lukas Jukovic, I play up front. Um, I joined Everton in the summer, in July, uh, from Swindon. It was originally in about February time. Uh, I was told that uh, Everton had been watching me for a few games and they'd put in a bid for me and it had been accepted. So uh, It was the club decision already, um, uh, they needed the money. So. Um, they accepted the bid and obviously I wasn't going to turn down the opportunity to come up here. It's been great, I mean, I've uh, enjoyed meeting the new lads and getting settled in. It's a great system, it's, uh, it's shown over the years that with the players it's produced that it's, um, it works, uh, bringing kids in at a young age. And I'm, I've just got to work hard in training, hopefully at some point maybe there'll be an injury or something or a suspension, I might get my chance and then it's up to me. No, no, I wouldn't wish it bad on anyone, but that's the way football works. You, you know, it, it might take something like that before you get your chance, and then it's up to you to take it. If you're not enjoying football, then your performance will drop quite considerably, so there's not really much point in playing. Just work as hard as you can and keep enjoying it, and then hopefully the rest will follow. It takes a lot of luck as well. Yeah, I'm with the I was playing uh, for Iceland under 17 in the Euro qualifiers. Yeah, that's got to be there. Yeah, it's been it's been good. It's, uh, came here yeah, when I was 16. Learned a lot. So, what I wanted since I, since I was little. The coaches were, were good. Uh, everything was good there. Really helped you a lot when you're 16 and you come over and, and everything is really good. Good standard. Uh, I played for Iceland uh, under 17, under 18, under 19, and under 21 now. So the first game I played was was against England. Yeah. I've made my selection. Stay uh, tuned. And we we've got the one. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. It only matters how good we think you are. This is the dream. I'm coming to see if we can find the play. Are you the one? We will find out the one. But first, let's visit Everton and Goodson Park. will be chosen to represent Soccer Dreams as the one. Oh. 
Everton manager Ray Hall makes his final decision and chooses the one. Hello, Mr. Hall. Steve, uh, I've made my selection uh, and we, we've got the one. Okay, thanks. With the final decision made, Steve Niger delivers the good news to the winner's parents. The first time we went to soccer dreams, I thought I was taking him to a soccer camp. It was very nerve-wracking as a parent, very, very nerve-wracking the whole first two days of the soccer dreams, that's for sure. As a mother, I was concerned about what was going on off the field, but I was assured that uh, it was very strict and, and uh, very well controlled and uh, I saw from my visits that it was. Uh, we didn't know what would happen. I don't think he had an idea of exactly how well he was doing. You know, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, he won't say anything bad, and we really didn't know what was going on, and then when we found out that he'd made the finals and was moving on, you know, as my wife said, it was a dream come true for, uh, for him and uh, from where he's come from and everything, it's, it's amazing. Uh, Steve, we got something for you from Everton we would like to present to you. And I would like to read it aloud. Oh, you want to read it aloud? Yeah. Okay. So, congratulations. We at Everton Youth Academy will wish you to inform you that you have been chosen due to your achievement on and off the field in a football excellence. You are the one. <laughs> the winner of the competition, Soccer Dream. See you at Finch Farm. Uh, best regard to Reha, the academy manager. Wow, my heart is beating right now. I can't even believe it. <laughs> okay. When I was first approached about Abe coming to live with us, I just thought we live out in the country. He's definitely used to the city. His whole life is in the city, and uh, uh, let's face it. Uh, I just thought it would be a total, total change in culture and lifestyle for Abe and I wasn't quite sure how he would handle it and it was actually my daughters that said, Mom, we need to do this, let's have him. I'm Abe's sister and I'm very proud of him, definitely deserves it, he works hard and you know, he's won this for a long time and this kid like lives and breathes soccer, he's always watching soccer for it, watching the games, outside juggling, practicing and uh, I love him, and even if it means that he gets to go to England, you know, I still am very happy for him, and I miss him a lot. Where to go, Abe? After proving himself as the Soccer Dreams champion, it's off to Liverpool for our young Everton hopeful. You know, before he came to Canada, it wasn't the best life uh, for adults to experience, let alone a young 13, 12-year-old boy living in a refugee camp away from his family. I never expected uh, to be here in England uh, at this point. Um, I was born here, I haven't been back for 50 years, so it's good to be back home on the ground I grew up on or was born in. And it's exciting to be back here. I just look at from where he's come, you know, over from Africa into Canada, and the young man eats, drinks, sleeps soccer. All I can hear is a ball bouncing in my basement all the time. If it ended up being here in England at Ev with Everton, um, I feel very comfortable after seeing their facilities and the manager Ray Hall and uh, the things that they have to offer their, their youth teams here. I'd be very comfortable with it. Abraham is nervous at first, but eventually he gets into the swing of things. Oh, tremendous. It's like so, 
so nice, it's gorgeous. I can't even like, I can't even explain it. Not being a huge soccer guy, I was just so blown away with uh, the Everton facilities. I was still like a little nervous, because I know like I, I'm playing like with the best guys, and so when I first got my, my uniform, I was like a little bit nervous. But at the same time, I thought I was gonna do like, I was just gonna go and have fun with the, have fun with the guys and play good. Some of them was like friendly and like. They make they, they make me feel a little bit welcome. Is this what you were expecting when you came over? Uh, not really. I thought like when I was, before I came over, I thought it was gonna be easier, but. Wow! If if Abe ever made it with this Everton team, it would be a dream come true. Is to go out there, work hard. At the end of all this, someone will be going to Everton. From the final 16 players down to the elite six, the Soccer Dreams coaches have finally chosen the one. Uh, like the the one thing I, I would say that was soccer dream is like it's a tr it's it's a huge huge organization. I hope like they keep doing it over and over again because like it gave you like a young boys like good opportunity to come over like here and then try their best shot. And the fact that I came here and try for the Everton team and it was because of uh, soccer dream I came here, so I appreciate that a lot. They say you live once, so I live once to the fullest. Respect the game, respect the name. I dated a free block, I'm giving him pain. I was king of the streets until they put me in chains. I got the heart of a gang, to hum a boss of a gang. I did my time in the game, yeah, I'm ready to die. I got my fan for the streets, a lot of pain in my mind. Nobody can stop that, I did not direct. If they're ready to die, they hear the sound of the man. Nobody can stop that, I did not direct. If they're ready to die, they hear the sound of the man. Training day is a sequel, money's the root of evil But dying is guaranteed to live my life for free Lord, I came from the ghetto, evil murder with metal If you heard it together, you see the reason my mental Going through pain, if you insane, then we the same The brightest side of the tunnel is dark